Hello, Ray Phoenix here. Welcome to Let's Play Mega Man 4, Part 1. In the year 2000X, I guess it's sometime in the 2000s and the world is a lot more high-tech, household robots rock and roll were created by master robot designer Dr. Light and were enjoying their peaceful days. Yeah, it looks like some pretty good vista scenery for an you know, yes game. Then one day, the industrial robots all went on, on the world went on a rampage and the world fell into complete total chaos. Yeah, I re Explosions all over the city. He doesn't seem to be doing anything in the city even though there's explosions there. Dr. Light quickly realized that the mad scientist Dr. Wiley was behind the nefarious deed, but he didn't know what to do. Rock having... having what? A strong sense of justice volunteered to be converted into a... into a what? What is it? Fighting robot. Thus, the super robot Mega Man was born. Some more pretty cool animations for an NES game. I could probably could like really make a well-detailed uh, bust of Mega Man of his eyes being opening, slowly opening like that. I think we're gonna get some more story. Yep, Mega Man's riding the subway. He rides on the roof, because where else would he ride? Mega Man shattered Dr. Wily's plans three times, and world peace has been maintained so far, but history repeats itself. Dr. Kozak, a mysterious scientist, was invent ha has invented eight powerful robots and sent them after Mega Man. Mega Man starts for the battle again. This time equipped with a powerful new Mega Buster. Yeah, we have a new weapon in this game. It's not that crappy old pea shooter we had in the first three games. We now have a Mega Buster. It's way more, it's far, it's more, it's a far better weapon than we had in the first three games. It's, it's, it's just the same thing, really, but it allows us to charge. We can now, we can now press and hold the fire button. We can release a charge shot, which does a lot more damage. It's kind of slow, it doesn't always work well against some enemies. A lot of the time you're better off just using rapid fire regular Mega Buster shots, which are exactly the same as the pea shooter shots you always use before. So you can use a charge shot on that thing most of the time, especially if you have a turbo controller. It actually is a lot more efficient to just do rapid fire regular buster shots. Look at that, that thing has given me a one up. This game actually is kind of generous of giving one ups and E tanks. This game is, uh, is, is in a lot of ways somewhat easier in the first three games. I was when the Mega Man game started. Some people would say the game the series is starting to suffer for seasonal rot at this point. It's like, well, at this point, what is more there to say? It's your regular. It's your regularly scheduled routine Mega Man game, just like what we've seen in the last three games. Just standard more Mega Man on the standard NES. Not SNES, no. It's 1991. The SNES and Genesis are out. The Genesis just had the original Sonic the Hedgehog this very year. And same with the, when the Super NES had Super Mario World on it. And what does the NES get? NES gets Mega Man 4, because NES is still kicking even though the new systems are out. The NES likes to make a statement against those the new games. You don't need to get those new systems. Just stick with the NES and get Mega Man 4. It's a pretty it's a pretty advanced game, which it is. This is a really advanced game for 1991, and it's on a last gen system too. Look at these graphics. I know I know I said Mega Man 3 had some really detailed graphics, but these these are like whoa, like these like these are like really like very realistic and very you know like like beautifully crafted and realistic compared for an NES game. The NES really was capable of packing a powerful punch, but still staying in the parameters in which it should stay at. In which the 2D game, we still have the sliding move that we had in Mega Man 3. Mega Man 3 introduced the slide. Mega Man still has that. This is the time where, I don't know, it could like be either one. Sometimes using a bunch of little shots could be better, or sometimes using a charge shot's better. It's, uh, it's really unknown. There's that snail thing that pops. It's kind of like that cat thing that popped up in, in Top Man stage in Mega Man 3. And of course, we're in the sewers, the sewage systems. There's going to be rats and vermin and all kinds of stuff. And snails, yeah, snails like to hang out in sewers or slugs. I'm not sure what that is exactly, but oh, they like to hang out in sewers. I like use charge shots on them, which is what I'm doing now. It's using the charge shot. And, and, and Mega Man is still, you know, Mega Man, and the charge shot is still pretty powerful. Mega Man still, he's not weak. He's not weak at all in this game. He actually still is just as strong and as durable as he's always been. Only he's still not that resistant to getting hit. He flinches quite a lot, actually. which makes it hard to do platforming and parts like this. We don't have the Rush Marine yet. Yeah, the Rush Marine's back in this game. But you don't get it until, like... Like after it's not when it's not relevant anymore. So it's really so it's very useless in this game. Which is probably why they never put it in any of the Mega Man games after this one. We first we first introduced you to Mega Man 3 and it's only 3 and 4 and that's just about it. We saw stuff like this in Mega Man 3 and, it, and, we, and we I'm sure Mega Man flinched a lot when he got hit by it. But once you destroy it, it's like, you know, most of those kinds of enemies usually get killed in one hit. So now it's time to take on the boss. We're gonna take on 
Toad Man. Toady Toad Man. We can destroy this toad easy just by using our Rapid Fire Mega Buster. Uncharged, because that's how Toad Man likes it. He likes his shots uncharged. He just likes to jump around too, because he's a toad. He just likes to jump around. He doesn't like to hang out in water. I'm not sure if toads like hanging out in water or not. I don't know. I know frogs like swimming a lot in water. I'm not sure about toads. He's going to release some acid rain. Now, how ironic that he's a toad that likes acid rain. I think acid rain would be bad for something like that. You know, acid rain makes this destroys ecosystems and makes a lot of species of toads and frogs, things like that, unable to live, and fish unable to live in their water. But I guess he's not. Well, he's a robot toad, so I guess that's why he likes acid rain. He probably produces a lot of it just by doing his regular stuff, which is firing shots at Mega Man, jumping around and, and being completely useless, which is exactly what he is. He is a useless pile of crap. This is a pretty cool animation shows here, Mega Man spinning or slowly spinning around, and then he shows him changing the color to his of his suit to his new weapon. It has a cool isometric grid drawn in the background too, a one-point perspective grid. It looks nice. Look at that Rush Marine. Just when it's not relevant anymore, we actually get the Rush Marine. Good job, Mega Man 4. You gave us the Rush Marine when we needed it the most. So now we're gonna take on Bright Man. I'm gonna brighten you up, Mega Man. Yeah, that's what Bright Man is to say in that Mega Man cartoon a lot. Um, that then that Ruby Spears Mega Man cartoon. A bright Man would appear in quite a few episodes. He would really brighten up Mega Man. He caused like a lot of bright camera flashes that really caused people to be blinded. Maybe it's better to get blinded because you don't want to see Bright Man when he's in his, his full glory. You know, maybe Bright Man flashes people or something like that. <laughs> Kind of like how Homer Simpson invented eye bleach. Homer Simpson invented eye bleach. The people want to see Selma and Patty get changed in the in the washroom because Homer Simpson saw it once by accident, and that's why he's eye bleach. He gave some to Bart too to help protect Bart. So you have to ride on these grasshopper things on the spikes, and there's those totem poles. Kind of reminds me a lot of the the. Wait, what is it? It reminds me a bit of that museum level from Mega Man X6 and they had totem poles. There are only these totem poles are actually more reasonable and get reasonably destroyed. We're gonna see a lot of multiple pathways in this level too. Or you could reuse a rush coil. A rush coil is back in the rush is back the rush coil is back in this game. It works just exactly the same as it did in Mega Man 3. So we can get up there, get up the ladder, look, there's just some health up there. We don't really need that health. It's kind of useless in the gumball machine. The gumball machine thing is, is back again. I'm gonna start to see this. I hope you like gumball machines. We're gonna be seeing a lot of them in these in these Mega Man games, these remaining NES Mega Man games. They're pretty much there. The series pretty much is set in stone now for how it's gonna be for the rest of the NES games. Oh look, another Mega Man game on the standard NES. Oh, just another Mega Man game. Another standard routine Mega Man game with multiple this one has multiple pathways, which is good. I think I'm going on in one right now. This one's gonna have some goodies at the end of it. We have to ride these annoying platform things that go on a rail, that travel us on a rail. The green one doesn't fall over, so we missed that, so we're gonna have to use a rush coil to jump up on it. Thank you, Rush. Thank you, Mr. Rush. And look at there, we got an E-Tank and a 1-Up. This game does have E-Tanks. They work exactly the same as they did in Mega Man 3. I think you could still keep them, even if you game over, it still keeps them. And you can only hold a total of 9, which makes that extra number in front of the, the uh, extra 2-digit number and the extra 0 in front of the amount of E-Tanks you like here. It makes that completely useless if you can only hold up to nine. Nine E-Tanks. Why they choose nine E-Tanks? I know. They probably, probably fear if you could let you have more, the game would be too easy then. But yeah, I'm not sure how many lives you're allowed to have at most. But then again, you almost never max out lives in a Mega Man game, because you're going to be needing them a lot of the time for all the stuff this game is going to put you through. Yeah, Mega Man 4, it, it's not the hardest game in the Mega Man series, but it's definitely, it's, it doesn't have as many BS moments as some of the earlier ones did. Well, you're still gonna be using lives a lot in this game. Bright Man stage is the worst. This level has my favorite music in the entire game. I love the music. It's something you could easily hear in your mind when you go to the when you when you're like taking a shower or something like that your your lips are gonna move and they're gonna make the music to this level. I know I've had that happen a lot before because it's just it's just so you know there's just there's something that's so oddly hypnotic about the music in this level. This makes it also gives you a sense of like oh like everything's good while well, at the same time everything isn't good because there's enemies coming at you from all directions from all eight directions or every directions the NES is cable of handling. There's these and there's these platforms that are gonna make you fall off most of the time, like those rides at Action Park where you're gonna be plummeting to your death. And yeah, there's a lot so it's this level full of it. And yet and yet Bright Man Stage's music perfectly fits that fits that perfectly. So I'm gonna take on Bright Man and his weakness is of course Toad Man's weapon, the acid rain is for apparently acid rain's probably gonna shorten his light bulb. It's gonna short circuit his light bulb that he has on his head. Just activate one shot and it's gonna take out some of his health. Activate another, it's gonna take out more of his health. 
he's gonna keep shooting us. And this guy is kind of like, yeah, he's like, he's a little bit like Flash Man from Mega Man 2, where he could make, where he could freeze. He has a freeze weapon. He's one of those, what do you call him? The stop time, the freeze time type uh, robot. I'm not sure the proper term for that is, but it's one of those ones that can stop time. Apparently, it's linked to his health, according to what I've learned from watching Rome Mithril. I've seen Rome Mithril do perfect runs of all these classic Mega Man games, and he says that it's like does health, his health, all, Bright Man's health all is what triggers him using his flat, his, what's it called, his bright weapon or whatever he has to stop time with. Because apparently light bulbs could be used to stop time, or minute flash stopper, that's what it's called. Apparently light bulbs could use to stop time, manipulate time accordingly. And I didn't know light bulbs could do that. This is Ray Phoenix, signing out.